Good evening and welcome to the Cal Soap Virtual College Fair. We're excited you've joined us to hear about these fantastic institutions. Uh, today, this is a webinar format. So of course we cannot see you nor can we hear you, but I know our presenters would love to hear from you. The best way to ask your questions of our presenters, and you can certainly do that at any time, you don't have to wait for their specific presentation, is to use that Q&A button on your screen to type your question to the school. If it is for a specific school, please do mention the name of the school to help our presenters out. Um, there are no more sessions, unfortunately, but we are recording all of these sessions. So if you wanna go back and review anything that we talk about tonight, or certainly if you wanna catch up with another institution that perhaps you didn't get to see, all of those recordings are available at strivescan.com slash calsoap. So that's my housekeeping for tonight. Oh, and I should also say too that our presenters may use the chat function to drop links or their contact information. Unfortunately, you cannot use the chat. So again, put those questions in the Q&A. So that said, I would like to introduce our first presenter from Brock University. Karen, take it away. Awesome, thank you so much. I'm just gonna put my screen up here. Perfect, so you should be able to see my screen now. Let me know if you can't, but hello everyone and thank you for watching tonight. My name is Karen Dancy and I'm an International Recruitment Officer with Brock University and your Regional Representative. I'm also a proud two-time alumna of Brock, so I'm always happy to speak further about the student experience. I'll put my email uh, in the chat box, but it's also available on the screen. Once again, my name is Karen Dancy. So just to give you a little bit of background information about Brock, Brock University is a public mid-sized Canadian university with just over 19,000 students and more than 100 different countries represented on campus. 13% of our student body are students from outside of Canada, but that does not include any Canadian citizens that do join us from abroad. Brock University does offer over 100 different programs across seven diverse faculties with 40 specific co-op programs available. All of our co-op programs at Brock are paid. Now, while Brock may have the resources and benefits of a larger school, we do still operate on the seminar system, which allows students to benefit from smaller class sizes in their tutorials, seminars, and labs every week. So here is a map of Canada. You can find Brock in Southern Ontario, close to the New York border and only about a 20 minute drive from the Niagara Falls and 60 minutes from Toronto. Brock's campus is located in the city of St. Catharines, which has about 160,000 residents and is ranked one of the safest and warmest cities in Canada. Today, it was 28 degrees Celsius. 28 degrees Celsius is 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So a beautiful day today in Niagara. So we'll be hearing about the many benefits of studying abroad in this webinar, but I did want to point out a few things specific to Canada. So all of our degrees are accepted worldwide, including back in the United States, should you want to return for work or graduate studies. We're also an affordable option for high quality education. Brock's tuition for international students is around 22,000 US dollars per year, and we do accept FAFSA if you qualify. If you hold Canadian citizenship, your tuition will be significantly lower than that. Please connect with me after tonight's presentation if you need more information on that. You're also able to work as an international student in Canada while you study as well. So you can see a photo of our beautiful main campus. We are located on top of the Niagara Escarpment and the only university in North America located on a UNESCO World Biosphere Reserve. The aerial photo does show our entire main campus, including our residence buildings. All of our residences are right on our main campus, just a few steps away from our academic and athletic buildings. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to walk from one side of campus to the other. And we are proudly the site for the Canada Summer Games. So we will be opening our brand new track and field sporting facility later this year. So we did ask all of our international students why they chose Brock out of all the global post-secondary options. As you can see, the top five reasons are on the screen. So Brock does offer a safe and affordable option. In comparison to living in Toronto, a one bedroom apartment is approximately 67% less expensive. So calculate that over the span of a four year degree. And that's quite a lot of money that you'll be saving in your pocket. As I mentioned earlier, Brock is a larger university with the benefits of a smaller school. So we do offer personalized international student support. So you are able to take part in transitional and ongoing academic language and social programming. 
We have also proudly been ranked number one in Canada for our mental health support services and number two for overall student satisfaction. Brooke also puts a lot of resources and effort into our student services to ensure that you are equipped to succeed. We also do offer experiential education in 100% of the programs that we offer. So this could range from a field course to a global internship to a paid co-op work term. And it is one of the reasons why our Brock graduates enjoy one of the highest rates of postgraduate employment in Canada with 96.5% finding employment after graduation. We also do offer two program plus enhanced degree offerings for students interested in later uh, pursuing a career in medicine or law. For the sake of time, I can't get into details right now about that, but once again, connect with me after the session if you want more information. So we do have over 70 different undergraduate programs and 49 graduate programs. These are spread across our faculties of applied health sciences, business, education, humanities, including the fine and performing arts, math and science, and social science. We do also offer 40 co-op programs. So co-op is the opportunity to, opportunity to get paid work experience during your studies. Co-op is a great way to not only make money, but also network in the field in which you eventually want to work in, build up your references and gain work experience while you're still a student. So it's like a win, win, win. I do wanna briefly speak about our admissions process as it is a little bit different than what you might find in the US. So first off, we do never require the SAT or the ACT. We also do not require references or personal essays for most of our undergraduate programs. So these are typically only required if you decide to apply to select optional scholarships. Undergraduate admissions is primarily based on your academic average, and we do offer guaranteed entrance scholarships to students with the equivalent of an A minus or higher uh, average uh, if you're coming directly from high school. So at Brock, we do offer rolling admissions, and we are currently accepting applications for September 2021 for most programs. You can apply directly at brocku.ca, and the application process is done completely online. We do also offer start dates in January and May of each year, and all of our program requirements are transparently listed on each program website that can be accessed at brocku.ca slash programs. All of our Brock students also have access to an academic advisor throughout their time at Brock. Advisors can help you determine your academic plan and they can help you with your course programming. So I do encourage you to stay connected with us and check us out on social media. Uh, we, you can find us at, at Brock University. And then lastly, if you did have any questions, feel free to scan the QR code available on your screen uh, to book an appointment with me or send me an email. Thank you so much. And thank you. Our next presenter is from Johns Hopkins University. Hi everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining all of us here tonight. Um, my name is Ryan Carroll. I'm one of the admissions officers at Johns Hopkins University. I'm also an alumnus of the university myself. Uh, studied history and political science. Um, just a couple of things to get started about the university. We are located in Baltimore, Maryland, right on the East Coast between Washington DC and Philadelphia. You can see from this slide that we have a couple of different campuses, but almost all of our undergraduate students are on our Homewood campus in Baltimore. We have around 5,300 undergraduate students. All these other campuses you see are parts of the Hopkins network. They are graduate programs that our undergraduate students can have access to if you're interested in doing research, internships, or anything like that at the School of Medicine, at the School of Advanced International Studies, the School of Education, whatever it might be. Those are all accessible to you as an undergraduate, but you would be spending most of your time here on our Homewood campus, which is about um, 144 acres or so. It is about a 10 minute, 15 minute walk from north to south, so pretty navigable. There's no major roads cutting through campus, so it's pedestrian friendly. When it comes to our academics, uh, we are a liberal arts and a research institution. Uh, what that means is we want to make sure that our students are taking advantage of a wide range of academic disciplines under their uh, over their undergraduate experience. For that reason, we do not have a university mandated core curriculum that all students need to take. Um, you have until the end of your first year to declare a major if you want to be in the School of Engineering and until the end of your second year to declare a major if you want to be in the School of Arts and Sciences, which is just anything that's not engineering. Um, you can change your major after that. but. Your majors will have some requirements for you, but you'll end up taking classes in every single academic area at Hopkins to really give you that well-rounded and balanced perspective to what you're learning. We have over 50 majors, over 40 minors, um, and about 60% of our students will actually end up double majoring or minoring because of that open curriculum that we do have. 
We are also a school that values small class sizes, engaged learning environments. So for that reason, around 74% of our courses are, are fewer than 20 students. So you're gonna be in that small engaged learning environment at Hopkins. A lot of our courses are interdisciplinary in nature. We are also a research university. We were the first one in the United States. We're the number one school for research in the country to this day. This just is a fun way of us saying that we have more funding for research than any other school in the country. Um, but students do hands-on work in a lot of different ways, whether it is research, whether it's internships, studying abroad, or different student clubs and organizations that are on campus. Um, students can get involved in all of these things starting your first year. So if you want to get involved in research right away, if you want to do an internship right away, there's no line. We have more positions available than undergraduate students. So you can just hop right on in. There's a lot of support networks in place to get you those hands-on opportunities that you're looking for. Our students are also getting engaged off campus with over 400 student clubs and organizations, all of which are student run. So you're gonna have the opportunity really to have an impact in whatever it is that you're looking to on our campus, everything from athletics to performing and creative arts to fraternity and sorority life to service. There are just a lot of different ways to get involved outside of the classroom. And all of our students um, typically live in the area of our home and campus. Our students are guaranteed and required to live on campus their first two years. And they live off campus their second two years on campus, but around 95% of our students live within three blocks of campus. So everyone is around the same place. Um, in the city of Baltimore, there is a lot to do. There's free public transportation, there's professional sports, the National Aquarium, a lot of restaurants, museums, art galleries, parks, and you're right on that East Coast. So like I said earlier, access to other cities is very easy. There's DC, which is about a 40 minute train right away, New York, Philadelphia, the Appalachian Mountains, the Chesapeake Bay, a lot of ways to get out in nature as well. We do have a couple different things to note for our application process. Um, we do practice holistic admissions. We do not have a rolling application process, but we do have three timelines for three timelines for first year students. We have two early decision processes and a regular decision process. Early decision is binding, regular decision is not. Other than that, they're just different timelines for the same holistic review process that we provide. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the entirety of an application. Um, the SAT and, uh, SAT and um, ACT are test optional for us next year, this upcoming academic year. Um, we do accept um, those scores if you would like to provide them, but they are not a mandatory part of our process. We do have some resources on our website from our college planning toolkit, essays that worked, really great things to check out. But for all of our students, regardless of when they apply, they're going through the same holistic review process. For us, that means we're taking a look at your academic character, your impact and initiative outside of the classroom, as well as your overall match for the university, trying to get as best a sense as possible of who you are as a student, the impact that you'll have on our community um, and your match for the university and the things that we value in our campus community as well. We do also wanna make sure that students don't have to worry about finances as a burden to that attendance. So all of our students, um, we are 100% need met for uh, demonstrated need, uh, which means that if there is a gap between what it costs to attend Hopkins and what you can afford, Hopkins will meet 100% of that need with different grants that we do have. We do not provide loans, so you don't have to worry about paying that money back down the road with interest. We are 100% need met. We are need blind in our admissions process for domestic students as well, so we're not looking at your ability to pay for the university when we're making your application decision. We do have a lot of ways for you to connect with us. If you have more questions, you're welcome to reach out to our office, to our Office of Financial Aid. I am the regional representative for Southern California, um, so you're welcome to reach out to me as well, um, or you can reach out to current students or connect with us through social media. So a lot of different ways to reach out to us if you have more questions after today, but I'll also be around in the chat or in the Q&A rather um, for any questions that you might have for me. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much, Ryan. And that's a great reminder to all of our students participating. If you do have questions for any of our presenters at any time, go ahead and drop those in the Q&A. Next, I'm happy to welcome our presenter from American College, Dublin. Thanks so much, Julie. I'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Second. Um, so as Julie mentioned, uh, my name is Sarah. And and I am the North American representative um, for the American College Dublin, located right in the heart of Dublin, Ireland. So I love to start off this presentation with this gorgeous picture um, of a street in Dublin. I think it's a really great representation of the city as a whole, um, just because there's tons going on, but it still has that intimate feel. So as you can see, there's restaurants and pubs and bars and stores, 
and libraries and just a ton of little places um, to discover throughout your time living there. Um, and if you bring your attention to the back of the photo, you will see St. Anne's Church. And that is the church where the American College Dublin holds their formal graduation ceremonies. So there's something for you all to look forward to a little further down the road. So first off, I just wanna mention that we are an Irish American uni university, which means we uphold the standards of accrediting bodies from both Ireland and the United States through the Quality and Qualifications Ireland and the Middle States Commission on Higher Education. So what this means for our students is that they really can look at themselves, how they learn, you know, what's most important to them and pick the path that makes the most sense for them. So through the Irish accreditation, you would be taking a three-year path um, to your undergraduate degree. So you would just be taking courses under that degree that you chose. So if you chose international business, you wouldn't be taking any English courses. Um, and then through the Middle States accreditation, you would be taking the path that we see more commonly here in the US, which is the four years, and you would be taking all of the courses under your degree, um, and then some electives that you could choose um, from, from other sections. So we are a very small school, um, about under 500 students, but we do this on purpose so we can offer our students these great small interactive lectures which are typically less than 20 students. Um, but from my own personal experience, I, I would say more um, like 12 to 15. Uh, and we love this arrangement because it really allows for an interactive experience within the classroom filled with tons of discussion, debate, and of course, a little sprinkle of Irish wit. Um, but what we see a lot is our professors using a ton of different media to get the lesson across to the students. So, movies, songs, games. Um, there's a lot of breakout groups amongst the students in the classroom. We have a very um, global student body. So just these little breakout discussions gives our students ton more perspective um, than they would just be receiving if the professor was just lecturing at them for an hour and a half. So as I mentioned, Dublin really is a great city. Um, and we really, at ACD, we encourage our students to take full advantage, um, full advantage of the city as a whole. We want it to really be an extension of the classroom. Um, so it allows for you to have these aha moments. Um, and when I say that, I mean, you know, you, you could be learning one thing in the classroom and then go out in the city and say, oh, hey, we were talking about this yesterday and then seeing it in real life. Um, another thing, we're located in a really um, central spot within the city, right on Marion Square. Um, if you know it at all, we are literally a 30 second walk from the National Gallery, which is just a beautiful museum. Um, and everything's really easy to get to in a short walk. And the people are just so friendly and always willing um, to lend a hand and help you with directions, anything like that. So you still get that metropolitan feel. Um, but also you're not lacking in that nice um, welcoming community as well. So I wanted to briefly touch on our administration, like our classroom size, it's small by design. Um, and so our offices operate under an open door policy. We really want to put an emphasis on our students and accommodating them as best as we can. And because of this, we encourage our students to drop by and get to know the staff so we can help you as best as we can. So these are the courses we offer that three year uh, track that I was talking about international business and liberal arts. And then the four year in international business, hospitality management, event management, liberal arts. And then we also offer um, some four year BFAs in musical theater performance and creative writing. So as I mentioned before, we welcome applicants from every corner of the globe. And because of this, our requirements are really aimed at gathering more of a holistic view of who you are. We really wanna to get to know you. And because of this, we require a minimum 2.0 GPA verified by your transcript. And then a personal statement that describes why you would like to study your chosen area at ECD. So this is really your opportunity um, to paint a vibrant picture of who you are not only as a student, but as a person. Because as I mentioned before, we really wanna to get to know you 
because we want to make sure that we're a good fit for you and that you're a good fit for us. Um, we are test optional. If you would like to include it to better round out the picture of you, you're more than welcome to, but we don't require it. Um, and then these are our tuition and fees. Um, for non-European stu students, it's 9,000 euro. Um, and for the BFA, it's a little bit more just because you study um, in different classrooms and have different material. And here's my contact information. I will also drop that in the chat below. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Sarah. Our next presenter is from Western Colorado University. Lindsay, take it away. Great, thank you so much. Oh. So um, thanks so much for your time, everyone. Again, my name is Lindsay Leggett and I am a Regional Director of Recruitment for Western Colorado University in Gunnison, Colorado. What you're seeing on your screen here is a picture of campus. It's absolutely beautiful. All the buildings with red roofs are our campus. And um, the town of Gunnison itself is about 8,000 people, including the college. And we'll talk a little bit about why that could potentially be um, a good fit for you and a benefit for you here in just a second as well. One of my favorite things about Western when I was a student is that our backyard is nature's best classroom. So especially if you're interested in any STEM related fields, we certainly have a ton of hands-on research opportunities as early as your freshman year. But even if you're not, um, like I was a communications major at Western and I got to work with a few different businesses in the Gunnison Valley on public relations campaigns and actually got to implement them for them. So um, we have a ton of different hands-on learning opportunities and a lot of recreational opportunities within the Gunnison Valley as well. Um, just kind of speaking to how small Gunnison itself is also talks about how small our university is. Our total enrollment is right around 3000 students, but that means that our average class size is 17 students. You'll never sit in a classroom larger than about 60 on campus, and that would be a pretty big class for Western. So you really get that one on one interaction with your faculty members, with your peers and with the community as a whole. For out of state students, our tuition is $18,600 per year, and you can compare that to the national average of um, just over $22,500 per year in Western is relatively affordable in that sense. That being said, we do have really competitive financial aid award packages where 80% of students on Western's campus receive financial aid in the form of grants or scholarships. We do have merit scholarships that are totally automatic. So if you have at least a 3.35 GPA, you'll automatically be awarded $8,000 per year to attend Western and that can go all the way up to $10,000 per year depending on your GPA. We are a WUI institution, so if you do not qualify for that merit scholarship, you will automatically get the WUI discount, which means you'll only pay 150% of in-state tuition. So that's about a $4,146 discount from that out-of-state price. We also have a lot of different resources for students. This is certainly not a comprehensive list, just some things that I like to mention. We've got our Academic Resource Center that houses our disability services, academic advising, career services, a lot of different offices within that, um, within our Academic Resource Center study abroad as well. Um, some things I really like to mention are that every single student that comes to Western are paired with an academic advisor who will help make sure that you're getting registered for the correct courses your first semester. After you declare a major, which you don't have to until the end of your sophomore year, you will get to choose an academic advisor that's within your major area of study and you work really closely with them um, throughout the remainder of your time at Western. We also have a math tutoring center and a writing center. So if you ever need help with any of your math homework or want help editing a paper, you can take those into those offices. We have an EPIC mentorship program where every single student that comes to Western is paired with an EPIC mentor. And our EPIC mentors are current students, they're sophomores, they're seniors. So they've experienced quite a bit on campus and they're a wealth of knowledge. And they're just a really great peer resource for you if you need um, help with anything at any point. We also have our multicultural center that houses five different multicultural clubs on campus and anyone and everyone is welcome and encouraged to participate. And we also have free mental health counseling for every single student that attends Western. We do have over 50 clubs and organizations on campus that range from academic clubs to passion and service clubs. We do not have Greek life on campus, but we have some um, 
like leadership clubs that are similar in some senses. We just don't have housing for those students. We have our multicultural center that I mentioned, our wilderness pursuits office that is a gear rental and bike and ski tune-up shop on campus. So if you wanted to go on a weekend backpacking trip, you could rent absolutely everything that you need from that office. Um, or if you wanted to try ice climbing, you could do that through that office as well. We also have NCAA sports, mountain sports, club sports, varsity sports. We are actually in the process of building a brand new esports arena. So we're pretty excited about that. We also have intramural sports too. If you're interested in visiting campus, we would absolutely love to have you. We are open for in-person campus tours or a virtual tour. If you can't make it to campus, we'll work um, just as great as well. You can go to western.edu forward slash visit. And we are still accepting applications for the fall of 2021. So if you'd like to apply to Western, you can do so at western.edu forward slash apply. We are test optional. So the only other application material that we will need from you is your transcript, um, either from your high school or from your current institution, if you are taking any college level courses. And you can use this code GoWestern2021 to waive your $30 application fee. And here is my contact information. Please feel free to email or call or text at any point. And I am more than happy to chat with you and answer any questions that you have about Western. Thanks for joining and go Mountaineers. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is from Portland State University. Thanks, Julie. Let me share my screen here. Hi, everyone. My name is Josephine Sorensen. I'm an undergraduate admissions counselor here at Portland State University, located in Portland, Oregon. Um, even if you don't come to Portland State University, I hope you come visit Portland, Oregon. Uh, there's a reason it's ranked consistently one of the most livable cities. It's a pretty incredible place to be. And Portland State University is located right in the heart of it uh, in downtown Portland. We are part of the uh, Oregon uh, public university system. Um, we are the second largest of all of the state schools in Oregon at just a little over 26,000. Uh, with the majority of those students pursuing a bachelor's degree, so they're undergraduate students, a little under 21,000. Um, we have a number of students who are first generation students students attending Portland State. So that means their parents did not get a bachelor's degree. And one of my favorite things about that population is often they inspire their parents to go to school. So it's not unusual at graduation for us to have family members graduating at the same time, which is always, always really heartening to see. Um, we are we ha are the most diverse when it comes to the racial and ethnic backgrounds of our student population, um, and we have approximately 6% international students. This uh, slide that you're looking at right now is located, uh, this photo is taken in the park blocks, which is this beautiful part of downtown Portland that has remained um, undeveloped, so it's just beautiful grass and trees and public uh, art and playgrounds and on our campus it's home to the Portland Farmers Market which is a year-round farmers market um, that's always super fun to go to it's good to go and support our local farmers our local vendors and there's a breakfast burrito cart there that students are obsessed with and wait in line for like an hour for we are a 50 acre campus. Um, we are not a university that requires students to live on campus, but a lot of our students choose to, um, especially if they're coming from out of state and our housing options are incredible. Uh, they're apartment style. So freshmen, you, you, there's no communal bathrooms. You and your roommate have your own bathroom. Um, an apartment in downtown Portland often costs a lot of money. So to be a young person living in downtown Portland as a student is pretty incredible. Um, freshmen are going to live with freshmen. Uh, but once you're a sophomore, junior, senior, you'll have even more housing options on campus. We're not a university where like only freshmen live on campus. We actually have uh, more sophomore, junior, seniors living on campus than freshmen. So it's a place students often choose to stay until they graduate uh, with their degree. Um, majority of our students utilize some form of financial aid to assist them in funding their education. We have wonderful cultural and resource centers um, in addition to student clubs. And one thing I'll say about living on campus and, and student clubs, both of those things are directly tied to good grades, 
and graduating in a timely manner. It's such an important part of going to school um, that we strongly encourage you to really look to take part in those things. And with the clubs, we have everything from, uh, we have a student run movie theater, one of the West Coast only student run movie theaters, free for students to see movies, uh, student radio station, student newspaper, political action clubs, clubs that are directly related to uh, uh, majors that you might be thinking about. Like we have an electronic car club that's, we've had many students go on to work in the auto industry coming out of that club. So lots of great opportunities to get involved. And then we also are division one when it comes to college athletics, we play in the Big Sky Conference. If that's something that you have an interest in, I encourage you to visit the athletic section of the Portland State University website to learn more um, about the, the athletic teams that we have and having your coach reach out if that's something you have an interest in. These are some of the larger employers of our graduates at Portland State. And I love this photo that goes with this slide because I think it again emphasizes the fact that you're going to, this is your university, this is your campus. This city is right at your doorstep going to Portland State University. So these employers are coming into the classroom. And while these are larger employers you see listed on the screen, we're also home to a lot of mid-sized startups, nonprofits, the opportunity to get that hands on on learning um, is really available to you. You just need to take advantage of it. I referenced a little earlier the cultural and resource centers that we have at Portland State. Here's a list of those. If you have a kinship for one of these communities, we hope that you would look to get involved. Um, They're there to serve you as a student at Portland State and serve our, serve our community at large. In the classroom, over 200 areas of study um, to choose from. Uh, you might know what you want to study when you come to Portland State, you might not yet be sure, or you might change your majors. An average student changes their major 2.8 times. Um, we are here to serve you as you make those uh, decisions about what you would like to study. Remember, we have just under 21,000 undergraduate students, yet we still have a 20 to 1 student to faculty ratio, an average freshman size class of 28. So you get kind of the best of both worlds, a big school and all the networking that can come with that, but still the small classroom environment. And soon, hopefully, we will be able to travel again, and you can look to participate in one of uh, our many study abroad programs, over 200 options for that. This is our current freshman admissions requirement. We're looking for a 2.5 Hewlett GPA or above and a C minus or better in the college preparatory work that you see listed. We are a WUI school, Western Undergraduate Exchange. Um, as long as you meet the admissions requirements and you have a 3.0 cumulative GPA, you can qualify for the WUI tuition rate. This is contact information. Uh, if you would like to learn more about Portland State, I hope that you will reach out to us. Thanks so much. Thank you. And our last, but certainly not our least presenter tonight is from London Metropolitan. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Um, and now we're gonna go to the other side of the pond to London. And so this is London Metropolitan. My name is Chidon Joyner and I'm the International Officer for London Metropolitan. And that is not how I sound at all. Um, <laughs> I just always like to mess around and do a fake British accent at the beginning. So please laugh at me. Um, but in all seriousness, I am an International Officer for London Metropolitan. I'm based in Los Angeles, California, actually in Whittier. And my job is to help make um, your transition to London Metropolitan as easy as possible and answer any questions that you might have about the university. So a little bit about London Metropolitan. We are based in London. We have two campuses, our Holloway Road and Altgate campus. We have about 10,000 students and at London Metropolitan, we offer three-year bachelor's degree programs and one-year master's programs. And so you can get your degree in a little bit, a lot faster than you would if you got it in the States. And so we also offer international student scholarships. We accept US financial aid and veterans benefits. And we have over 200 undergraduate and graduate programs. So one thing we really pride ourselves at London Metropolitan is making um, the campus and the university accessible to anyone and everyone. And so we really believe in diversity and creating a global community. 
Over 64% of our students are BAME students, which stands for Black, Asian, or Minority Ethnic Students. And we have over 147 different nationalities represented. We also have, um, or 96% of our students, staff, and faculty come from at least one underrepresented group in higher education. And so one of our famous alumnus is Sadiq Khan, who is the current mayor of London. He actually just won his re-election just over a week ago. And he believes in London as a higher education, education capital of the world. And at London Met, we strive to um, be that as well. And so why should you consider getting your degree in the UK? For first, first off, it's a little bit cheaper than out of state or private options. Again, we offer international student scholarships. And if you wanna stay and work in the UK, we offer the post-study work visa, which allows you to work for up to two years after you graduate. We have long breaks. So if you wanna come back to California, you can do that. And again, we offer US financial aid, which is um, a, a huge benefit. A little bit about the application process. We are rolling admissions. We have no application fee. We have a flexible September and January state start date. And we generally accept students around a 3.0 GPA. But if your qualifications are a little bit lower than that, then that's fine. I'll be happy to discuss um, your qualifications with you. We are test, test optional for the fall and we offer advanced entry for transfer students. Our application deadline for September, again, we're rolling admissions. So it's actually in early August and you can apply to us directly um, to the site for free. So uh, now I'm gonna go through a couple pictures just so you can get a feel for the campus. So this is an aerial picture from our Holloway Road campus. Our Holloway Road kind of houses our business, human sciences and social sciences. If you're a fan of football or soccer as it's called in the United States, um, we're right next to Emirates Stadium where Arsenal Football Club plays. Also, we're about a five minute tube ride from St. Pancreas Station where you can catch the train to Hogwarts um, from platform nine and three quarters. Um, but in all seriousness, we're actually that's that train station is connected to the King's Cross train station, which will allow you to take the Eurostar to Paris or to Belgium in two and a half hours. So you're really connected to the rest of Europe from London Metropolitan. For the more artistically inclined people, we have our artistic um, um, campus, which is our Altgate campus located in East London, and that housed our artistic majors like art. Um, fine, um, sorry, excuse me, architecture, theater, fashion, those kind of things. And now I'm gonna buzz through a couple pictures just so you can get a real good feel for the campus. So this is one of our super labs, which is the largest or one of the largest in Europe. Um, one of our learning centers where we've tried to combine the classical elements of London and more Ikea modern furniture and things like that. Um, some more of our cutting edge classrooms. We have newsrooms and TV studios art, architecture, and design studios, gyms, sports halls, just, just about everything that any modern university would have. And then we have cafes, bars, and chill out zones just for students to hang out and, and meet. And one thing about London is it was actually ranked the number one city for international study because there's just people from all over the world. Like I said, 147 different nationalities represented at London Metropolitan and even more in the greater London community. You also have, you also get discounts to different things around campus. So um, discounts to, to pubs or to restaurants or bookstores around campus, but then even in greater London. So if you wanted to go see a show on West End, which is kind of like the UK version of Broadway, you could see a show like The Lion King for $20 versus like the $150 that I paid um, when I went to London. In addition, you're in London um, Heathrow Airport is kind of the flagship airport of London, and it's, and it's actually the most internationally connected airport in the world. So you can go just about anywhere from London to Heathrow. Um, I actually saw some tickets for June, um, like a couple weeks ago, to go to Greece for $30, <laughs> like round trip. Um, my wife did her degree in the UK, and when I went out to visit her, we, um, we were able to go to Ireland for like $17, go to Malta, go to Spain, Paris, all these different places. So if you choose London Metropolitan, you not only get an amazing city in London, but you have the ability to travel the rest of Europe and even touch other parts of the world. Maybe you want to go to Morocco or maybe you want to go to, maybe you want to go to Dubai or something. And so um, that is pretty much my time. I just want to say, check out this video, do something you love. You can type it in on Google. And other than that, my name is Jadon Joyner and I am your point of contact. And so I'm looking forward to connect and 
Um, now I'm gonna pass it back to Julie. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna ask everyone to turn their cameras and their microphones back on. We wanna give you a little extra added benefit of joining us tonight. And I am going to ask our presenters to share one piece of advice they would give you as a prospective student um, as you're starting this college search. And so we'll go in the same order that we presented. So Karen, if you have a piece of advice for these students as they start their college search. Awesome, yeah. Uh, I think my main piece of advice would be to think outside the box. Uh, don't necessarily do what your friends do or what your siblings did. Uh, everyone's different. Everyone's gonna have a unique journey. Uh, and as this uh, webinar did show, and I'm sure many of the other ones showed, there are, so, there are amazing options, both in-state, out-of-state, but also out-of-country. So don't be afraid to travel and go abroad for your university studies. This is kind of the perfect time in life uh, for that opportunity. Fantastic. Ryan? Yeah, I would say, um, you know, just don't be afraid to be an advocate for yourself in the college application process. We only know as much about you as you provide in your application. So if you feel like there's anything that doesn't fit into, you know, one of those boxes that's in the application, there are places for you either to include it elsewhere or to reach out to us directly and let us know, because we're not going to know it if you don't include it. And our goal is to know you as best as possible as we make a decision if you're a good match for the university. So advocate for yourself, include the information you think is most relevant to who you are, and let us know if there's anything else that you feel is important about who you are. Sarah. Uh, yeah, I think going off of that, do not be afraid to reach out and ask us questions. Um, this is why we're here to help you and give you um, a hand. So, you know, as you can see, there's plenty up here to choose from, so it can be overwhelming. So just don't be afraid to reach out if there's anything you're unsure of. Lindsay, what would you add? Well, I would say that my biggest piece of advice for students going through the college search pro process is to actually pick your top three to five schools and go visit those campuses. Um, and especially like during this time, things are a little bit different. And most schools have a lot of virtual options as well. So if you can't make it to campus, engage with us virtually and we're happy to help accommodate you in any way we can. Josephine? I'd just say be kind to yourself. We just went through a, a pretty traumatic year. Um, it, there's no, you know, there's no um, problem. Like, don't assume you should know something because who are you going to go to to be like, hey, when you applied during a pandemic, what did you do? No one can answer that question. So um, be kind to yourself and do what you need to do because. It's not, you can always transfer if you pick the wrong school, you can transfer to no other school. You're not locking into it. Um, just think about what your needs are and go with it. And Jadon. Yeah. All great advice. I'm gonna have two kind of, I'm gonna second Karen on um, please travel, whether it's you choose a domestic school or an international school, just choose, use this time to travel as much as you can while you're in college. And the second thing I would say is please, please enjoy your senior year. Um, you only are a high school senior one time, so please enjoy um, the time that you have and um, yeah, take advantage of it. And I would say just breathe, <laughs> just breathe. Oh my gosh. And you know, now if you're vaccinated and the CDC says it's okay, you know, you can breathe without your mask on. So that's a big plus too. So um, thank you again for joining us. I will add one extra piece of advice. You are going to do so much via email in the next year. So perhaps at this point, you want to set up an email address that is just for college stuff and then definitely check it, check it on a regular basis. I know it's so 2008. But trust me, colleges want to communicate with you via email. So be ready for that. So as we close out tonight, just want to remind you all that as you close out of your window, you will see a very quick four question survey pop up. So if you could take a moment and answer those questions and help us out um, so that we can continue to offer some great programming for you and for other students in the future. Um, unfortunately, you cannot sign up for any more sessions unless you wanna jump in on the next group, um, but you can, as I mentioned at the beginning, go back and review any of the sessions, um, either ones from tonight um, that you've seen or not at strivescan.com slash calsoap. So 
there is, there's our, our program tonight. Thank you again for joining us. Be safe, be well, and have a good evening.